another update of progress on this simulated phone line. We have this phone, an old mechanical rotary, and based on markings on it, this was built in the 60s. That's plugged into this central office right here. The other central office just has the digital touchtone phone. So I implemented pulse dialing into the sketch since the last project update. So I want to test being able to dial over to here. But first, let's see if this one can ring. So this is just a quick test. Dial the number. So that seems to be working. If I answer it, it stops ringing. Hang it up. And now, if I want to dial over to the other phone, And that's working. So I hang up, cancel the call, and it stops ringing. So there's still bugs in here, but it, now we've added more features and it's generally functioning. But there's something else I always wanted to try once I got this system working. One objective I always had once I get this phone line simulator working is to take two old computers with two modems and make them connect as if they were on a real dial-up connection on a phone system. So here I have a Tandy 2500SX, which is a 386SX 25 megahertz, and over here is a more generic 386DX 40 megahertz, and it's open because even though it worked last time I used it, about eight months ago, this time the hard drive was having issues, so I had to put another one in there. Luckily I had one. And I have a 56K US Robotics modem and a 144K US Robotics modem. The 144 is on this computer and the 56K is on the Tandy, connected up with large serial cable, 25 pin on this side, 9 pin on the computer side. And I have this phone here connected to this modem just so I can hear it ringing for testing. Then down here we have the slim phone line simulators, one plugged into this modem and one plugged into this modem. So if I want to dial from this computer to this one, I tell the terminal program to dial as if this computer is located physically somewhere else. I'm dialing the number, this one will ring, and then I manually answer it, and then the two will connect. So. ATDT, so I'm dialing touch tone. The phone number, I'll lay the keyboard down. So when I press enter, that will dial. Then I'll have to hit ATA to answer on the left. All right. A T. A, enter. And they both connected, and the lights on the modems are showing a carrier detect and all of that. So if I type on the keyboard for the left computer, test, it shows up on both sides. And on this one, I'll type whatever I can reach. I typed on this side. It doesn't show up here, but it showed up on the destination. I have it set up this way so that later I'm going to try setting up a bulletin board system on the left, and then it will take care of echoing back to this side, so I didn't want to mess it all up. But we have a two-way connection, so now I can hit Alt-H to hang up. And no carrier, because somebody hung up the phone. So now I know this phone line simulator can also work with a modem connection, because really it's just an audio path, except the audio gets interpreted as data. But I was concerned initially, is there going to be some sort of noise in this system where talking doesn't matter, but the tones on the modems might be a bit distorted, but it seems to be working fine.
So at this point, the next video is probably going to be over on the main channel. This is actually my second channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the main channel, you may want to do that so you get the next video update later this month. So that's where I had first assembled this PCB. And then I'm going to do a little bit more demoing and another modem one. I'm going to set up a bulletin board, BBS, and I'm going to try calling it from the other computer where each one has a modem on a slim board. So stay tuned on the main channel for the next update.